Hello, I'm Lizzie Rose, and what you're about to see is a pilot for a new TV series called Witch in the City. But first, a few words of introduction and explanation. The idea for Witch in the City came about from a few different directions. Firstly, I've had a lot of experience working with the media with exposure on Australian and US television, radio, magazines and digital media. I've also been lucky enough to have worked with a number of high profile celebrities who've encouraged me to take my work to a wider audience. And then there's all the amazing, awe-inspiring and fascinating things that I experience on a day-to-day -day basis through my work. Now, when I say work, it's work that's quite unlike most other types of work that you might see on reality TV. You see, I work as a spiritual advisor and as a healer. I'm ordained as a pagan reverend minister and an initiated eclectic high priestess of witchcraft. I'm also a psychic, a medium, a clairvoyant, and I perform exorcisms. Over the course of the first season of Witch in the City, we'll show you examples of all of this and more. In tonight's episode of Witch in the City, Lizzie helps a couple whose home has been plagued with evil spirits. For four years we've just suffered. Suffered so much that up to the point of giving up hope in life. We show you a great witchy recipe to protect your home that you can make yourself. And see how you can improve your love life with this week's secret spell. Hello everyone, I'm Lizzie Rose. Welcome to Witch in the City. I'll be your host over the weeks ahead and you'll be able to come with me as I meet clients in my roles as a healer, psychic, a clairvoyant, a high priestess of witchcraft, and in today's episode, an exorcist. Lynette and Sean were at their wits end when they first contacted me. The couple from suburban Bayswater had built this brand new home, but strange, dark things started happening almost as soon as the ink was dry on the contract. When I first met them, nearly four years after they moved in, I was startled to learn of all the disturbing and unsettling events that had befallen them. But let's hear it from them in their own words. Together with all the incidents happening in our house that was causing also havoc in our lives, like we were having arguments as well, we were having health issues. Everything was just being crazy for us to lead a normal life for about four and a half years. It was late afternoon and I was having a late lunch. So I was on the stairs on my tablet. Sean was upstairs holding Rav. He was about three weeks old and Sean was coming down with him and he fell. And I looked down and he had dropped Raf as well and Raf was face down. And I was in hysterics and I just threw whatever I had on my lap and I just grabbed Raf and I was just trying to comfort him and I was panicking. I was like, he was all right. And Sean was in shock as well. He was like, I couldn't believe what just happened. And I asked Sean, how did it happen? And he said that he felt push. I was pushed. Is T okay? I don't know. Without, a, without fail, I can always see a dark shadow standing by the staircase right behind me, and it's always standing there observing me. It's definitely a lady sort of figure, I can sense that. And when I try to turn around, it just, just goes past quickly, just like that. This property is lovely during the day, it's peaceful, but once it starts hitting 7 o'clock, all the way through the night till the next morning till 5, an eerie feeling just comes over the house. Like really, like something just doesn't feel right. I remember this incident where we were actually all sitting down in bed and getting my son ready for bed, reading a book. Just a normal night. Just a normal night, everything was just fine. Halfway through the book, Raph, for no apparent reason, just pointed to the direction right where the um, bathroom is and said that there's a little girl standing there. 
I was looking out as well and I couldn't see anything, but I knew he was looking at something. So there's a girl, you know, and she's playing. So she wants to play. And I saw his eyes and he would not look in that direction. I could see fear in his eyes. He would not face that. He just put his head down and refused to get up. I was really anxious, so I was quite worried. Like, what's he seeing? What's he looking at? And yeah, it was a bit distressing. So, especially for you know for what he can say, and when we couldn't. We have a really beautiful picture just facing the kitchen, and strangely enough, it was, it was never straight. It was always tilted. So especially when we, in the morning when we get up and we're just making breakfast and we just notice it's like it's just tilted to an angle. So Sean and I will adjust it, you know, and and then the next morning we will notice it shifted to an angle again. So I will go up to it and adjust it and I'll be thinking it's kind of strange considering it's a big picture and it takes a, quite a bit of force to tilt it to that angle. Sean and Lynette were distraught to discover their beautiful new home seemed to be possessed by a powerful negative energy that started with sightings and disruptions, but soon turned even darker. Sean told me one thing much, much later after he saw um, he saw an apparition when he was out in the garage. She showed herself as a horrible sort of character, and she was actually um, the whole four legs and the hands were actually up on the garage, just looking down. So he freaked out, he didn't look too much, he went back inside. He didn't want to alarm me because naturally I was alarmed when he told me that. Absolute nightmare. Like, you know, um, for four years we've just suffered. Suffered so much that up to the point we've given up hope in life, in everything we did. And up to the point we're just going to sell the property off, even at a loss. We didn't really care. We just wanted to get out of this place. We'll give viewers an insider's look at how I work with the clients that come and see me. And we'll follow up on these stories afterwards to see how they're getting on and if their problems really have vanished into thin air. We're also planning a series of short, fun segments like Did You Know? and Lizzie's Secret Spell with great ideas on how viewers can increase the positive energy in their lives as well as how to minimise the negative. If this all sounds unbelievable, then hold on tight to your broomstick and let me take you for the ride of your life into the exciting, strange and sometimes bizarre world of Witch in the City.